So as COVID-19 is spreading across the world, we see a increase of the COVID-19 theme malware. Most of them are using phishing emails to deliver the content. So this McAfee report, mostly you can see like the delivery mechanism. So if, for example, related uh, something related to coronavirus, it will be an attachment. Uh, you can see various file attachments. Sometimes it could be a word file with a macro attached. So from these uh, viruses, I actually selected uh, information stealing virus. There was a blog post by reasonsecurity.com and they have a detailed analysis of the COVID-19 information stealing. I was using the John Hopkins coronavirus map. Uh, they were actually they're distributing this virus as an app to view, but unfortunately it was having a malware inside that. Right, so I got an interest on this malware and uh, you can see in the IOCs we have the virus actually file name was coronavirus map.exe. So in this task, what we'll do is we'll be trying to find a way to find a sample of this malware from the internet and do it to do a basic analysis on how it works. So first of all, I'll use my good friend, uh, Google, and I'll search for samples. And you can see it won't be that easy to find a sample. So the easiest way is use, as you can see in the history, I use the any.run engine to find the sample of the virus. So uh, you can see somebody has uh, searched for this particular virus in any.run in March 29. So I'm going to use that particular section and you get the virus report for this particular virus, all the execution. So the thing that I'm interested in here to get a malware sample from here. So go here and I'm going to get the sample from this side. So this is the actual, you can get the sample from here. So I'm going to download it in uh, my desktop malware and save this file. And you can see the download password uh, archive is infected. Okay, right. So I'm going to close this um, and show folder. And you can see here I get I have the virus file. And remember this folder is excluded uh, from my uh, virus guard. Uh, and I'm going to extract this coronavirus. So my password was infected over here. Okay, so coronavirus map.bin and so I'm sure this is an exe file. So let me see if I get the icon of the virus. Yep, it looks like there's something over here. Now what we are going to do is we are going to upload uh, into my favorite virus analyst tool in run and just to see how this executes. So it's very easy in any.run. You just go to app.in.run.com, just register yourself and you create a new task over here. So remember this, uh, I have done a previous video on this tool uh, of Emotet malware where I give a detailed analysis. Uh, you can use this tool to analyze malicious URLs and in this situation we are going to upload a file and see how it's running and so it's easy like if you have you can set up your own malware environment but if you're on the go if you're on the run and if you need quick data quick set of IOCs this is one of the best ways that I have found an easy way so first of all I'm going to specify the defaults over here and I'm going to choose the file coronavirus exe I'm going to upload it here you can keep the defaults and I'm going to increase the duration because I have a paid version I'm going to give like something like uh, 390 seconds remember default you get 60 seconds so sometimes it's enough to see what is the execution and to get the IOCs where the virus file is connecting what type of files it's dropping so it's mostly enough to grab all the IOCs that you need but sometimes if you want to see some interactive if you want to see the files and roam around the operating system to see some temporary files that are created you need more time okay okay so I'm going to click run I'm going to keep I just changed uh, the time but remember if you don't have if you have the free version you can still run it and just execute it as I do right and I'm going to click run so at this time it will spawn my own virtual machine for this uh, virus and you'll get a fresh machine and you can make sure everything that is running is from the virus executable. Okay, so I can see a DOS command prompt and this is the exe that the user normally clicks. So we can see the process tree over here, which is the easy thing, coronavirusmap.com exe, it spawns corona.exe. And over in this window, uh, this section, you can see all the processes and here you can see all the 
uh, connections that he's making and you can see it's trying to download the john hopkins map there's some several process making connections you can see uh, even we have some connections to api telegram.com and digicert and everything okay so you can see there's a lot of uh, exes that are running over here uh, there's a lot of things that are happening so i'm going to show you the interesting stuff we can check the api stuff over here as it's going and here are the connections that were made the gcp uploads and downloads okay the dns requests okay so it connected to john hopkins servers and download the map and coronavirus state space okay we have a response from the site okay what is this and uh, again we have no address requested requested again it's requested maybe it's blocked you can see it is marked as malicious so in.run gives more information on this one and finally we can see we can get some details on the api from here okay okay so i have i think i have collected enough information and i'm going to stop so we can check the iocs over here so you can see i have a lot of information that is grabbed what I'm interested in is like uh, I want to see the IOCs. Okay, so coronavirusnet.com it has downloaded a lot of executable files as you see and the connections that it was made. So this you can use to block or do anything on your network and it has made a connection to telegram.com. And if you see over here, the best thing that I want to see here is the process graph. So the process graph will actually show you a detailed view on what happened on this section. So again, we downloaded coronavirus.com and it uh, downloaded another sub-process called Corona and it executed the coronavirus also. If you see uh, the information that was the detailed analysis of here, uh, let me show you. So you can see the same thing, the analysis done over here by the analyst. So coronavirus map actually it was the exe file to download all the John Hopkins map data. So that's what we can see here. So this was like the main uh, interface that is user seeing, but in the background you can see it create a lot of sub processes. Now we are interested in what was created and what was there. And uh, you can see corona.exe, cmd.exe was created. For example, if you see like a cmd.exe, just go to more info and just check what it was running. So it was running a batch file called corona.bat. What we already do, so it has loaded some modules. Maybe it want to do some operation, like want to read some files. So we don't see any registry changes or anything that is done by this one. Uh, corona.sfx.exe is there. Uh, let's come to this step. And go to more info. So you might have to go one by one and check what it is doing. So it is accessing some temporary files. Okay, All right over here. Let go, let's go. Let's go to bin.exe. Okay, again it's running the bin.exe file. We made some registry changes. Okay, so we might have to check. Uh, okay, it's uh, going to looking at the internet settings. Okay, and cache history, cache cookies. So this, if you read this file, it's kind of like uh, information stealing malware. So it's reading all of these areas. Okay, so that is what is done by bin.exe. And build.exe is again, right, running build.exe, you'll see. And you can see some Russian text over here, interesting. And let's go into Windows Globalization. Oh, it's running a long code over here. So see users, app data, roaming, font module. This is interesting. It's trying to do some file. Ah, okay, and I can see over here it's zipping the file over here. Hmm, that's interesting. Why do why does this malware create a zip file? Uh, so according to the process graph, we saw this bin.exe was reading the cache, and this particular malware is uh, known as QU Lab. Okay, so Let's say we can just give a search for QLU lab. Oh, how to remove QLU lab stealer. Okay, again, we can see a Trojan password stealing virus. Okay, it can read more details on this. 
The next thing is you can see after running these two staling, it's running the attrib.exe. So attrib.exe is a very popular way in viruses to like hide files in Windows. Okay. Okay, as expected, so attrib.exe is actually used to hide this file. Okay. Let me show you a small demo on this. For example, uh, if you create a file, okay, a sample file. Okay. What I'm going to show you is the how attrib works. It's a very old trick that you can use it yourself. So the first uh, tip is if you want to open the command prompt in this path itself, it's very easy. Just type cmd over here, and it will pop up the Windows cmd.exe in this window itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the attrib command a w t r i b. I'm going to add the hide attribute and what I'm going to say is hide the sample.txt file which will actually hide it from the view. Okay, if you want to unhide it, it's very easy. You have to remove the hidden attribute that is minus H, right? So it will be showing our file over here. As you can see, you can check it from there, right? But even if you hide it, users can still go to, you can see, you can go to Windows and go to options and just say show hidden files users can still see the file over here okay this is as hidden file so what attackers normally do is okay i'll remove the hidden attribute from here when they're hiding okay you can use the plus s over here if you say windows okay make it a system file and make it hidden okay now even if the hidden function is show hidden files is on windows won't show the file okay let me show you again so here if you go view and show hidden files is there so in order to view these type of files you have to do another thing you can say hide protected operating system files okay it's recommended because if you delete an operating system file it will be deleted but in this situation if you want to see the hidden file you can still see it over here okay so you can you can actually if you want to see these files uh, in the infected folder if you use this command and if you say strict dot asterisk you can actually view all the files over here okay so that was a small demo on how to use this attribute function inside here right now what we are interested in we want to see what was the file that was hidden by this malware okay so we might need to restart this malware i'm going to upload the coronavirus file and just to get some time i'm going to get about, uh, about something like 400 seconds it'll be easy for me i'm going to keep all the defaults as here i want to check that uh, file that was hidden inside and uh, what is what was his hiding So we can see the coronavirus map is loading now and we'll see until that uh, file is created and it's what is it hiding over here. Right. Okay, so let us quickly go to this attrib location. So start. Uh, let's go to let's go to my computer and see. You can see the virus is loading in the background. See users, admin, application data, roaming. And AMD64 is not shown because it is a hidden system file, as you know. So, fall down search options and go to view and say Windows. Okay, I want to see the hide of uh, protected operating system files because that's why the antivirus, uh, the buyer, malware authors do. Go to AMD64, voila, and we can see there's a 7 is it file of 21 kilobytes, and we can see the sample of the malware. So I'm interested in this file, so I'm going to keep it like this. Okay, so we have about a lot of seconds left. Go into this, okay, and extract it to this folder. Just to keep it safe, okay. Right, and just double click on this. Okay, now this is the thing that was collected from this file. These are the information that are stealed. Okay, so what is this steal? It goes steals the cookies. For example mozilla.org and you can see all the session parameters that he's using okay so this once the attacker receives the data he can actually initiate a connection with your session 
autofills. These people will search for your usernames, telephone numbers, passwords or credit card numbers, everything if it's stayed, saved in autofill data, it will be easy to grab. Okay. So these are the basic data from the browsing files as we saw earlier. Okay. Oh, okay, and it's collecting the user's PC information, KB layout from where it has connected. Okay, and what are the softwares that is installed? Maybe for an attack attack or just to check what kind of attack is using and the processors that is running on the system. Very interesting. And let's go to the juicy tough passwords. So if you have any passwords stay saved in Google Chrome, and you can see here uh, in this honeypot environment, there is a password saved. So you can see there's a clear text password that is using over here. And finally, okay, last but not least, Adaga gets a screenshot of your desktop. So this might be happening periodically, we don't know. Users might be sending this information through the uh, HTTP connections that is made. You can look at connections if there's any uploads. You can see the coronavirus space, you can see some uploads are there. So further analysis is required. But you can see uh, the power of any dot run. Uh, you can easily find what else is there. And when you stop the malware analysis, actually, you can get a report easy on what was running and you can easily identify what type of information they are seeing. Okay. And a recording will be there. The next big thing is if you want a report on this one, you can just click on text report. Okay. So this will take some time and you can see easily uh, the malicious activity. And if you can, if you want to show the analysis, you can share this link. It's a public, uh, and it will give a detailed analysis of what are the stuff that is shown, and uh, the PE headers of the file, which we'll be discussing later in advanced method. And the favorite thing is the execution of the malware. So you can see whatever the child process, the video of whatever the executable that was created at the background, what was running, everything is shown in the background. Okay. Some screenshots to be counted and, and the detailed process graph. Okay, what it was running over here. Okay, and some details. So I hope you understood on how to uh, get details on a particular malware <coughs> and how to search a malware again. Okay. Now, if you want more information on what type of connections that it made and what type of files it uploaded, you can go to the PCAP file from. Okay, so. By analyzing the PCAP, okay, so we have about 10 MB of activity. Let's click on this, right? So it shows all the queries that were made. I'll go to my favorite thing if to see HTTP request. Okay, so you can see it's connecting to API telegram.com and a lot of uh, sites over here. So, okay, if I want to see the information that is going on, TCP stream. Okay, it looks like this malware is broken, so, so it might be disabled, but if you want to see whatever the files that are uploaded, everything will be available in this packet capture. So I hope you understood what is happening from uh, this particular software tool and I hope you learned something from this episode and if you want to see historical viruses, use this method and uh, find the exe name and you can actually learn a lot from all viruses. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you need more videos like this. And thank you for watching.